So we already spoke about the fact that a magnet will exert a force on current moving through a wire. In other words, if we look at the following illustration, suppose we have a magnet that creates field lines or magnetic field lines pointing upward. And we place a wire perpendicular to these field lines. And this wire has electrons moving through them. So electrons are moving this way, and that means by convention our current should be moving in the opposite direction. So what we said in an earlier lecture is that this magnet will exert a force on this wire because the wire has moving electrons. It has a current flowing through it. And the force that it exerts, the magnitude of our force, is given by this equation. The direction of this force is given by the right hand rule. So in this case, if we use our right hand rule, we see that our direction of the force is going into our page or into our board because this points into our current and this points in the direction of our field. So this points in our force direction. So the force is into our board or into the page. Now, I want to ask the following questions. What is current? Well, current is simply the total amount of charge that moves over some time, right? So in this case, we have eight electrons and that's our current. That's our total charge. And our current in this case is simply the time it takes these guys to travel from this point to this point. In other words, the total charge that is on these eight electrons divided by the time it takes them to travel from this point to this point, which is a distance L. And I want to ask the following question. If our magnet is capable of exerting a force on all these electrons at once, can this magnet exert a force on a single electron? And the answer is yes. Now to find the formula, we have to look back at our formula for the entire current. The formula is force equals BIL times sine theta. Well, theta is the angle between our field lines and our current. L is the length, this guy, so length of our wire that is exposed to our field. I is the current flowing through our field, or through our um, wire. And this guy is simply the value of our magnetic field and we plug the values in, we get the force that our entire wire feels. Now I want to find the force that a single, uh, single electron feels. How would I find that? Well first, let's recall that I is total charge divided by time it takes to travel uh, some distance L. And that is simply N times Q divided by T, where T is the time it takes to travel and N times Q is the total charge. Remember, in this case, we had eight electrons, and that means our n should be eight. But I want to find a general form for any amount of a charge. So that means I put I, my current is equal to n times Q, my, to <coughs> my total charge, divided by the time it takes to travel. So I take this guy and, and I plug it into my I in this equation, and I get force is equal to my magnetic field times this whole guy times L, the distance times sine theta. Now let's combine, let's combine the L and let's combine the T in this manner. And let's put my N up in front. So E equals N times B times Q. And now notice I have L divided by T. What's L divided by T? Well that's simply velocity, right? Velocity has units meters per second. That's exactly what L divided by T is. So I replace this guy with velocity and I get equals n, the number of particles, times my magnetic field, times q, times velocity of those particles, times sine theta. And now notice what n is. n is some number of particles. And I want to find, for one particle, what is the force a single particle feels in a magnetic field. And so I replace n with 1, and I get my force is equal to magnetic field, times the charge of that particle, times the velocity of that particle, times sine theta. Theta in this case is simply the angle that the velocity vector of this particle makes with our magnetic field that's created by our magnet. And this gives us the magnitude of that particle. To find direction of that particle, the force that our particle feels, we once again have to use our right hand rule. But now our right hand rule only works for positive 
particles. So if instead we're dealing with negative particles, I can still apply my right hand rule. Except at the end, I have to switch my directions, reverse my directions. So if I get upward for a negative particle, it's actually downward. If I get inward for a negative particle, it's actually outward, and so on. Now one important note about our result. Note that the force we get, the direction of that force is perpendicular to both my velocity vector and my magnetic field vector. And that means that since our vectors are perpendicular to each other at a 90 degree angle, no work is done on my charged particle. If no work is done, then the velocity or the magnitude of my velocity, the speed does not change. What changes is my direction. So if my particle is traveling in this magnetic field, what won't change is the speed with which it travels. What will change is our direction. And so velocity will change because direction changes. But the speed will remain the same. The magnitude of our velocity will stay the same.